in the world of Warhammer 40,000 and Age of Sigmar, countless battles take place across snowy landscapes. They're often left covered in debris, blood and gore. Some armies like Flesh Eater Courts or Night Lords are famous for leaving some truly gruesome scenes in their wake. In this video, we'll be creating a blood-soaked snowy base for our abhorrent Gore Warden. But remember, all the techniques we're going to show you can be used on any base from any model in your collection. The paints we've used are on screen now, but remember, you can use whichever paints you like. Here's also a list of all the additional equipment that we've used. If you're new to painting or want to brush up on your skills, you can check out the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos to learn all about our paints and techniques. Our abhorrent Gore Warden has already been painted. In this video, we're only going to focus on the base. Before we begin, we need to undercoat our base. We did this before we painted our Gore Warden, so the base is already prepped for painting. We use grey sear spray, but any undercoat will work fine. If you're looking for a head start, you can undercoat your bases with Mechanica Standard Grey. The first step is to paint Mechanica Standard Grey onto all the stone. On our base, there's this huge pillar to paint, but you may find on your bases, there's only a couple rocks to fill in. Either way, the application process is exactly the same. We'll thin our Mechanica Standard Grey down with a small amount of water and then apply it in two thin layers using a medium base brush. If the stones and rocks on your base aren't quite as big as this, you may find it easier to use a smaller brush instead. Remember to let the first layer dry before painting the second one. With all the stone in our bases painted, we're now going to move on to adding some texture paint. We'll be using Astro Granite for this to match the colour of our stone. But it's completely up to you what texture paint you use. We'll be applying our Astro Granite using a texture tool, using the large end to get loads of texture onto the base and switching to the small end when working around the details of our model. We don't have to worry too much about any overspill on the stone, as it can actually help it blend into the base. But if your mini is going to be standing on this texture paint instead, be extra careful around their feet. Once you've finished, be sure to leave it for about an hour to fully dry before moving on. Once it's dry, we're going to apply an all-over dry brush of Dawnstone. We'll be using a small dry brush for this, but you can use whatever brush you like. Work some Dawnstone into your brush using some kitchen towel or cardboard. And then, once there's only a small amount of paint left in the bristles, begin flicking the brush back and forth over the model. How heavily or lightly you dry brush is up to you, but we recommend starting lightly at first, as you can always go back and add more later if you want to. If you want to know more about dry brushing, we've got a great video all about it in our Painting Essentials playlist. With the dry brush applied, we can see that it's really helped to make that base slightly brighter and add a nice variety of colours. Next, we'll be painting all the rope using Zandri Dust. Don't worry if your base doesn't have any rope on it, if so, you can simply skip this step. If you are painting the rope, make sure to thin down your paint with some water first and apply it in two thin layers. We'll be using a small layer brush for this, as we don't want to get any paint onto our stone pillar. Using a small brush helps us be more careful. All the rope has been painted and our base is starting to come to life. Next, we'll be painting all the silver areas on our base. For us, this is just this simple metal hook, but your base might have some more areas for you to pick out. Just like before, we'll be applying this in two thin layers. Next, we'll be painting all the body parts and carcasses onto our base. The Gore Warden's base has this awesome looking dead guy attached to this pillar, as well as this grotesque severed head on the floor. We'll be painting both of these areas with Kislev flesh and with a small base brush. We're going to thin it down with some water first and then apply it to both areas in a couple thin layers. Make sure to let the first layer dry before moving on to the second one. We finished applying the Kislev Flesh and now all the colours on our base have been blocked in. Next, we're going to apply an all over shade with Agrax Earthshade to tie all those colours together and add some definition. We'll be applying it straight from the pot with a medium shade brush. Depending on the size of your base, you may want to use a smaller or larger brush for this. Just like our texture paint, you only need one coat of this, but it can take quite a while to dry. We recommend leaving it for about an hour or so. With the Agrax Earthshade completely dry, we can see that it's really helped to tie all those colours together and add some definition. It has made all the Kislev flesh quite dark though. To fix this, we're going to layer over all the raised areas on the corpses with Flayed One Flesh. We'll be using a small layer brush for this, as we want to avoid getting any paint into the recesses, and a smaller brush helps us be more careful. We'll need to apply this in three thin layers to build up a nice solid colour. We finished layering Flayed One Flesh onto the body parts and now they look great. 
Next, we're going to show you a quick way to make these gross corpses look a bit more fresh. This is 100% optional though, so feel free to skip ahead if you want to. To add some bruising and damage, we'll be using Berserker Bloodshade and Lamia Medium in a 1 to 3 ratio mix. We're mixing it with medium to make the effect nice and subtle. Once our mix is ready, using a small base brush, we're going to tint the flesh around all the severed limbs and wounds. You don't need lots of this, a little goes a long way. Now that all the Berserker Bloodshade has been applied, all the body parts look nice and fresh. Next, we're going to add a quick all over dry brush of Screaming Skull. This will help tie all those colours on our base together and finish it off. With that all over dry brush complete, our base is finished and ready for some technical paints. Obviously, whether you add these or not, and how much you add, is completely up to you. We're going to start by adding some Valhallen Blizzard to the base to create some snow. A perfectly cold climate for fleshy accords. Using our texture tool, we're going to scoop out some Valhallen Blizzard and start applying it to the base. Once we've got it onto our base, we can start spreading it around. A good mix of small and large patches will make our snow look natural. Another way you can make snow look natural is by thinking about where real snow might settle. For example, some snow might get stuck on these ropes, or gather around the base of the stone as the outer areas start to melt. You can do some really cool and interesting things with this, so take your time and have fun. With all the snow added, it's really brought the whole base together. You can leave the base here if you like, but we think a base for such a gruesome character like the Score Warden could do with some blood first. We'll be adding some blood for the blood god straight from the pot around the base. There's once again loads of cool ways to do this. You can simply apply blobs of it onto the base or make the body parts look even fresher by painting over all their wounds. You can also flick some blood for the blood god onto the base using a small dry brush and your thumb to create a splatter effect. This can be really messy though, so make sure to put something down onto your surface to protect it first. Some kitchen towel or newspaper will work perfectly. All that's left is to paint the rim of the base in whichever colour matches the rest of your army. We've used two thin layers of Steel Legion Drab, but you can use whatever colour you like. These bases work great for Flesh Eater Courts and the other Age of Sigmar armies of death. With that said, they'd also work super well for some Warhammer 40,000 armies. Imagine a whole legion of Night Lords on bases like these. That would look awesome! These bases are really fun to make. There's so much room to be creative with all that snow and all that gross gore. We hope you've enjoyed this video and making your own blood soaked bases. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, check out our videos on the Warhammer YouTube channel. Or you can head to your local Warhammer store where our amazing staff will be happy to help. Thanks for watching this video, see you next time, bye bye!